Now that we know about expectations that users have from a voice user interface, the next question is, what should a skill say? How do you best formulate a verbal response? If you are actively listening to what voice assistants respond to your questions, you will notice the concept of implicit confirmation. It feels natural, so you'd mostly notice it if a voice interface wouldn't do it. Katie Pearl gives a great overview of this and the following principles in her excellent book, Designing Voice User Interfaces. Just imagine the following conversation. You are asking the smart speaker, what's the weather tomorrow? And it just answers 15 degrees. It's concise and to the point, but unless you're very familiar with the voice assistant, you might wonder, did it really fully understand me? And is this the exact info I'm looking for? After all, it contains some implicit knowledge about what location you are interested about. As such, a better answer is uh, that you repeat parts of the query and include them in a natural sounding answer. For example, the weather for St. Pölten tomorrow is 15 degrees. The answer is slightly longer, but it's a full sentence and it contains additional important information. You know that it understood that you are interested in tomorrow's weather. and that is giving you the weather of the city of St. Pölten, which is probably set as the default location of your speech assistant. However, in some cases, implicit confirmation could be too much. For commands that you frequently use, you don't always want the speech assistant to start talking and repeating everything you said. Instead, it should just execute the order as quickly as possible. This is especially true for prompts where you see the results anyway. For example, if you say, Turn the living room lights on. It's enough if the speaker responds with OK. You'll see that the lights turn on. It might even be enough if you just play a simple short sound that confirms the uh, request. For some information, it's also OK to give a generic confirmation. That's a bit like the how are you question. Usually, you're not really interested in a lengthy response to that question. But especially a speech assistant is probably not intelligent enough to have a meaningful answer for every possible thing the user can say to such an open question. Instead, you can just give a generic confirmation like, thanks for sharing this with me. Then you go on with the real content of the dialogue and start asking the user for actions to start. So you don't directly ignore that the user said something but don't go into details and focus on the relevant content of your skill. In many cases, you have the option of showing a visual response in addition to the vocal response, especially if you're talking to a voice assistant on a smartphone with the screen unlocked, you kind of know that the user is looking at the screen right now. In the example shown in the screenshot, Google Assistant responded to my question, what's the weather tomorrow, with just, you may want a raincoat. The exact information about low and high temperatures, rain probability by time, and everything else is much easier to get when you see it than if it's all read to you. So, if you know that the user has a display as well, and you're pretty sure that the user has the possibility to look at the screen, you probably can shorten your audio response to the most vital part and show additional optional information on the screen. This keeps the conversation brief and short, but still gives the user all the information he or she might need. But there's more to giving good answers. Something that's usually only done for advanced skills is to consider the speech recognition confidence. This also relates to how costly it is if your skill makes a wrong decision. Let's do an example. If you ask the voice assistant to order toilet paper for you, and the smart speaker only replies by saying OK, but didn't correctly understand your request, it could end up ordering something different. This could obviously result in you paying money for something you don't need, and you wouldn't want to use the voice skill again. Therefore, the following strategy is a good idea. Usually, you also get the confidence level the artificial intelligence has for correctly understanding you. If it's very high, you can simply confirm. But as it's an important decision, still not by just saying OK. Instead, you should respond with OK, ordering toilet paper. That way, you still know what happened and your skill should provide you a way to immediately canceling.
For example, if the user in turn responds, no, I don't need toilet paper. If your voice assistant is medium confident that it correctly understood the user, you could say, I think you asked to order toilet paper. Is this correct? It's then an easy follow-up for the user to respond with, yes. You prevented making a possible mistake, but didn't put lots of additional load on the user. If your recognition confidence is low, you should probably say, I'm sorry, I didn't get that. What would you like to buy? So instead of making an assumption about what the user wants to order, which is probably wrong if your confidence is less than 50%, you instead confirm that the user wants to buy something, but ask to simply repeat what to buy. That's again a very short answer for the user and increases the chance that your system understands the product better if the user repeats it. Something that's easy to implement but also easily forgotten is using conversational markers. When you just write a dialogue for a speech assistant, you usually focus on the task at hand. What is the question of the user and what is the best way uh, the voice assistant should reply? However, when you then actually speak out the written conversation, you'll quickly get the, the feeling that the conversation sounds unnatural. Let me give you an example. You want to sign up for a service through the voice assistant, so it needs to gather some of your personal data. What's your name? Andreas. How old are you? 40 years. Where do you live? In Austria. And so on. Technically, it's a perfectly fine and efficient dialogue. You shoot one question after another, but the user wouldn't feel comfortable. Conversational markers are a principle to improve the conversational flow. You can give timelines to show the user progress. For example, start the voice assistant respond with, first, let's start with your name. Later, the, let the user know that you are halfway there. Another thing is that you can just acknowledge that the user was understood before asking the next question. Simply adding thanks or got it makes the conversation sound a lot more natural. Even more, everyone likes positive feedback. If you respond with good job or nice to hear that from time to time, it just gives your user a good feeling. Who wouldn't be happy that you get some positive feedback from time to time? Another important advice for good skill design is to differentiate between novice users and experts. Same as with good computer programs like video editing software. You can do every command with the mouse and through menus, but real professionals who use the software every day will rely on keyboard shortcuts or maybe even have specialized hardware to get the job done much more quickly. The same principle applies to voice user interfaces. As mentioned before, especially because a voice user interface doesn't have any menus, you need to explain all the available options to your users. But if you already started the skill a hundred times, you probably don't want to hear the same information all over again. You just want to get your job done. So save how often the user has already performed an action and gradually reduce the instructions to speed up the conversation. Of course, you always need to give the user help if requested. For example, in an Alexa skill, responding with help needs to give you contextual information about the user's options, and this is even requ uh, required for getting certified for publication.